The Lord be with you. Good morning and a warm welcome to you all. A special welcome to our guests and visitors joining us today. Good to have you all here, both in person and online. My name is Glenn Schlecht. I'm the senior pastor here at Emmanuel. And things are happening today. As was obvious as you walked into the atrium, that is filled with tables, our ministry fair after worship. A little bit more on that in a moment. Today is our kickoff to what we have been leading up to for many, many, many months, and that is our Red Letter Challenge. So much more to be said about that. Uh, come sermon time, I'll explain a little bit more of, of where that's all going to take us and what we're grounded on as we'll be talking about some foundation-laying uh, information, if you will, from what Jesus gives to us. So, with that, let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, as we gather here this morning, we come with a, a sense of gratitude. We come to you because we know who you are. A God of grace, a God of love, a God of life. And Lord, being the God you are, you know us and you know us well. So you know the needs that we've carried into this time of worship. And I pray that through our time together, our time with you and in your presence, that you would speak to us and provide what you know is most needed. So with that confidence, we come to you and place ourselves and our time together into your hands, asking boldly for your blessing on us as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And I invite all who are able to please stand as we begin with our invocation and call to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O oh God, you are righteous. Your judgments are upright. Your precepts are unforgettable. Give us understanding, and we will live.
we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, first in the quiet of our hearts, and then together in the spoken confession. Almighty God, we confess that we are sinful people who at times stray from your word. In our brokenness, we can so easily be tempted to take our focus off your word, not allowing it to work in our lives. Forgive us, Lord. Give us a hunger for your word and use it to strengthen us to stand strong against the temptations in our lives. Show us where true life is found in knowing and doing your will as revealed to us in your word. Friends in Christ, the scriptures tell us that God's love will find us no matter how far away we are from the word. It does not matter what we have done wrong or what we have neglected to do. We belong to God, and his forgiveness and love cover our sin. By the blood of Jesus and his death on the cross, our sin is forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy. Be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Genesis, chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. All the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sari, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at, Sh at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. 
Do not fear their threats, do not be frightened, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. The gospel reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 7, various verses. Jesus said, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And if I could have the children come on forward for this morning's children's message. Any parents or adults who want to join, you're welcome to come up as well. I think it's banana. Do you think so? I think it's vanilla. Vanilla. Banana or vanilla? What do you think? Chocolate. I hadn't even considered chocolate. Strawberry? Um, you might wonder what I'm talking about. You know, no, not milkshakes. I was thinking of getting Pastor Glenn a cake. And I was thinking banana, because I'm pretty sure that's his favorite. Or me, but I heard, what did you say, chocolate? Or, ooh, spice cake? Angel food. Oh, Pastor Glenn, angel food. What a great idea. Let's vote. How many of you think Pastor Glenn's favorite cake is banana? Angel food, apple, spice, um, peanut butter. Ooh, I don't know. How am I going to know for sure? Gip, why don't you go up and ask him what his favorite cake is, would you? No? Everybody, let's say, what's your favorite cake? German chocolate. <gasps> Somebody back there really knew. You know, we could have voted all day, and we still might have chosen the wrong one. May well, it sounds like God's cake, angel food, doesn't it? But to find out exactly for sure what Pastor Glenn loves, we had to go and ask him. We had to find out from his very mouth what it was. Our voting didn't help. Our thinking or guessing didn't help. We had to go ask Pastor Glenn so we knew for sure. Well, today in our Bible reading, God tells us that we can know for sure 
what it is that God likes. Now, God doesn't mention what flavor cake he likes, but Jesus told us a lot of things about what pleases God and what God thinks. And those things are written down in the Bible, right? I want you to look at my Bible. This is a teeny tiny Bible. Do you see what color some of the words are? I skipped you, oh no. Can you tell? It's teeny tiny print. Are all the, are all the letters the same color? What colors are, what color is that one? Uh, red. red. Now some Bibles are printed this way, but other Bibles aren't. But all Bibles are God's words. But in this Bible, they did something really nice for us. They colored Jesus' words red. And we're starting a red letter challenge. Are you ready for a challenge? Yeah? Yep, where there's no words, it's just white. In the Bible, God's words are printed, or Jesus' words are really important, and sometimes they're printed in red. But during the next three, well, six weeks or so, in worship, in Sunday school, in small groups, we're going to be talking about what are the exact words Jesus said and try to figure out how we can know them and grow in following them. You know what? That's a great point. Just doing tiny little things can make a big change. Learning one set of God's words can make a big change, and maybe you heard them. Jesus said this, Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that you've given us your word and you've given us exact words to tell us what is good, what is true, and how we can live in your love. Help us to be wise and to build our lives on you and your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Mrs. Hine. So as we kick off the Red Letter Challenge this morning, I want to start with a question, a somewhat personal question. Are you ready? What are your goals in life? What are your hopes, your aims, your desires, your dreams? Now, you can go almost anywhere with this. You can go big, you can go small, you can go overarching with your entire life, or maybe just little pieces of your life. But I want us to start this morning by giving you some time to think about this, if you're comfortable sharing with someone who's sitting next to you what a goal or several of your goals in life are, feel free to do that. Ready? Goals in life. Take a moment, please. All right, I'm not going to ask any of you to share what your goals are. We're going to be all over the board as far as big and small. But I do want to ask you another question. And that is, did any of you say that your goal in life 
was to be judgmental. Anybody? How about hypocritical? Anti-homosexual? How about your goal being too political? Or old-fashioned, out of touch, insensitive, boring? Any of those? Any in your wheelhouse as far as your goals? No, of course not. And that's a dumb question, right? But, but you know what? Not too many years ago, two authors, David Kinnaman and Gabe Lyons, did, spent three years polling young, unchurched Americans, asking what they thought of Christians. I think you may see where this is going. After three years, millions, literally millions of young people described what they thought of Christians. And these were their exact words. Judgmental, hypocritical, anti-homosexual, too political, old-fashioned, out of touch, insensitive, and boring. Is that what we, as followers of Jesus, aspire to be? Of course not. That's not what we want to be, how we want to live, how we can, want to come off. But you know what? Might some of this be what we're unintentionally demonstrating by the lives we live, by the words we use, by the attitudes that we carry? It can happen if we're not being thoughtful. If we're not being thoughtful about what we're doing in life, if we're not being thoughtful about who who we are as children of God. Now, one of the marks of discipleship that we have here at Emmanuel, and these marks of discipleship are, are marks that we have held up for over several decades now. These marks of discipleship that help us to answer the question of, okay, how do I grow in my faith? How do I get to know Jesus better? very simple, very basic things that we take out of God and His Word. And one of those marks of discipleship is intentional spiritual growth. And that is, just as it implies, as followers of Jesus, we strive to be intentional. Intentional about the way we live our lives. Intentional about living out who we are, intentional about looking to grow in our faith and our relationship with Jesus. Being intentional. And the desire, and I have to believe that, that the desire for all of us is that we as children of God are aspiring, are trying, are wanting to grow in all the right ways, in all the best ways. And that's what this, in part, Red Letter Challenge is all about. The Red Letter Challenge is a time of being intentional. A season, 40 days to be exact, about six weeks as we focus our attention very specifically on Jesus and on his words to us. As Gail mentioned with the kids, for some of us in some of our Bibles, those red letters that we have in the scriptures that, that highlight for us all the things that Jesus really did say. 
And that challenge, this red letter challenge, it's out there for all of us. It's there for adults of all ages. This challenge is there for our youth, high schoolers, middle school. And the challenge is out there even for our children, as young as they may be. And for those of you who may be here visiting with us, worshiping for the first time, that challenge is for all of you as well. We've got a bunch of small groups that are going to start meeting next Sunday. A bunch of them here on Sunday morning. Children for our youth and a number of them for adults. We have other groups that are meeting basically every day of the week as a place and an opportunity for you to plug into. And books are still available, as you couldn't miss Pastor Robin coming in. He's got you, he's had you for weeks and weeks on end. But books are available. Places, groups are still open as far as welcoming the new members into those groups. And with all of this, the Red Letter Challenge carries with it the potential to cause some very serious and very positive change in all of our hearts, our minds, and our lives, both individually and also for us together as a ministry here at Emmanuel. Now, if you're still on the fence about this, or if maybe you're hearing this for the very first time, it's not too late. We're ready to jump in. Check with Pastor Robin. Talk with him. He'll be happy to share with you any of the many different opportunities that are there in front of us. Now, I do realize that some of you may be sitting there thinking, and maybe have been thinking, oh, this thing is so gimmicky. You know, and I'm just, I'm just not into that kind of thing. Well, to be honest, neither am I. I'm not into gimmicks. I'm not into slick sales pitches. But you see, our intention has been, as we have been working on this almost a year now, getting ready for this rollout today and in the weeks to come. Our intention, it has always been to be anything but gimmicky, anything but slick. We're embarking today on a short journey, a short journey that I hope and pray will become a longer journey for every single one of us. But we're starting with a short one, 40 days, six weeks, this journey that is going to help all of us with the craziness that we find ourselves up against in this world in which we're living today. Craziness on a global scale, the craziness that's going on in our individual families and the challenges and difficulties that we find ourselves having to deal with, having to work with, having to try to sort through. This journey is going to speak into our lives. I know it will in some very profound and very practical ways. What we're doing now, this whole challenge, it grows out of a, a short parable, a short story that Jesus told to his disciples and told to us. A story about house building, comparing a, a house of a wise a house that a wise man built to a house that a foolish man built. And as any good realtor will tell you, and I know we've got a number of great realtors here at Emmanuel, 
that the three most important things when it comes to buying a house or building a house are what? Location, location, location. Now, little did you know that Jesus was behind that little nugget of truth. Nugget of truth. No, no that's our summer series. We're, all, we're done with that. We're moving on from the summer series. No, seriously, though. Jesus was relating God's word and then what we do with it to a man who built his house on the rock and a foolish man who built his house on sand. And as Jesus told that story, we've got these two men, these two houses, and when this tremendous storm came up, the house on the rock stood firm. It was not budged because its foundation was solid. It was on rock. Whereas the man who built his house on sand, we're told that home fell with a great crash because it had no foundation. It was built on the shifting and anything but solid sand. Now, the point Jesus was making is a simple one. It's not hard for us to connect those couple of dots, is it? Hear God's word, take it to heart, put it into practice, live it out in the day-to-day of our lives. And what we're doing is building our house, building our lives on the rock. On the rock of Jesus Christ. On the rock of his word. On the rock of what we know to be truth. When the storms come, and the storms will come, there are many of you right now who are in the middle of all sorts of storms, challenges, hardships, difficulty, vocational, medical, financial, relational. Those storms, when they come, we are like that wise man building our house on the rock of Jesus, his word, his truth, we can be assured we're not going down. We're not going under. We are not going to crash. Is it going to be easy? Uh, Not necessarily. There may be some tough sledding, getting through some of these storms and some of what we find ourselves up against. But we're not going to be taken out because what Jesus had promised us, we're built on him, on that solid foundation, the rock. You see what this red letter challenge is set up to do is to help each of us in our lifelong building projects. Because faith doesn't come and faith doesn't grow simply by osmosis. There needs to be an intentionality about what we do and how we live and what we are, what is going on in our lives. And so what we're going to do is a 40-day build, a six-week build, Build by first hearing those words of Jesus, making it a point to listen, to hear what God has to say in his word. Secondly, by by reflecting on it, by thinking about it, by maybe spending some time with others, talking through it, studying it, going deeper, but but thinking more on this. And third, by putting it into practice. Not just hearing it, not just listening to it, but living it. Putting it into the day-to-day of our lives. Now, to help us focus, 
we're grouping Jesus' words together because it seems that he spent most of what he said talking about five main areas of life. And those five main things are being, forgiving, serving, giving, and going. So over these six weeks, we're going to be delving into each of these big, big topics, one at a time, all of which are going to be extremely practical when it comes to the lives we lead and how we can put his word into our lives. And it's going to add tremendous value to our own day-to-day lives, to the faith that we have in Jesus, and how it looks as we follow him. It's these five things that we're targeting, that we're going to be aspiring to. Not judgmental, not hypocrisy, not being old-fashioned, out of touch, or boring. Because Jesus and God's Word is anything but. And so the challenge for us is to take in those words those red-letter words of Jesus. And as we put them into practice, change hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit, working not only in us, but through us, as we exude this life that Jesus has brought to us. A life that is filled with hope, that is filled with love, that is filled with direction, that's filled with truth. We stand and we build on this rock of Jesus and his word, letting that very word continue to shape us, to form us day in and day out, to be the people he's called us to be and the people he's created us to be. What Jesus did by way of laying down his life on that cross And the miracle of the resurrection to new life once again three days later, that's what makes all this possible. That's what makes all this real. That's what gives to each and every one of us purpose, meaning, direction in terms of what it is that we are to aspire to. That's Jesus. I'm looking forward to this 40-day build, this journey that, as I said, I hope and I pray expands beyond these next six weeks and spills over as we watch and we see some of the amazing things that the Lord has in store and what he is going to be accomplishing in us and through us, the building of his kingdom and to the glory of his name. Now, the what now? If you want to grab your insert the Bring It Home devotions, uh, it is, as you might expect, encouragement that if you haven't yet, consider taking up the Red Letter Challenge. Pick up a book, find a small group to be part of, and get ready for what the Lord will do in you these next 40 days. Amen. And that peace of God, a peace that at times goes beyond our understanding, let it guard our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus, today and always. Amen.
invite all who are able to please stand. And we join in making confession of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed this morning, those words of truth drawn from God's own word, that foundation, that rock on which all followers of Christ for the last 2,000 years have been reiterating, speaking, reminding ourselves of who this God is and on whom we build and on whom we stand. So we join our voices with those who have gone before us and with those who continue to stand with us here today as we confess our faith in the triune God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As we continue with our time of offering, time of offering that has always been a part of the worship of God's people, and this time, as you hear me say often, it's not a time for guilt, it's not a time to twist arms, it's not a time to say you got to give more, but it's a time to pause, as God's people always have, to, to reflect and remember once again the grace that the Lord has poured out on us and all that he has given to us in our lives. So the offerings that we give, whether those are offerings that are left in the baskets out in the atrium or gifts given through our website, through the app, or through texting, it is all one and the same. It is given to the Lord out of our love and out of our thanks to him to put forward his mission that he has laid before us to continue to share his amazing gift of love and life with our community and beyond. So join me as we reiterate some of these wonderful promises God has given to us. Friends in Christ, we know that all we have, all we are, and all we do is a gift from God. God does not need our gifts, but he knows that life is better when we share generously from all that we have of our time, talents, and treasures. As we give our offering, a tenth or so, we're giving thanks to God for his abundant gifts to us. Lord, as we give back to you from what you have graciously given to us, may we do so with a cheerful spirit and with thankfulness in our hearts. Amen. For our time of prayer, we remember the following requests that have come in through the week and this morning. Prayers for the Ninefeld family this weekend for safe travel to Minnesota at the death of Cheryl's mom, for Virginia Bueller and her family following two deaths in her family, Ron Stark, whose funeral was here at Emanuel on Thursday, and for a grandson, Chad Aldridge, whose funeral will be this Thursday at Timberline Church up in Fort Collins. We pray for Cheryl Gilbert's mom as they wait on test results in anticipation of her having a heart catheterization tomorrow. For Jamie Sweet's mom, whose health continues to decline, prayers for strength and healing for her, but also prayers for Jamie, for her dad and her sister as they attend to her in these challenging days. We pray for Lori Rubisam in her ongoing recovery 
for a friend of Heather Selberts, who's been, di who's been diagnosed with a brain tumor, for Ron Odson, who underwent surgery yesterday and is at home dealing with some pretty serious pain. We pray for relief to come. Also, both he and his wife, Lori, were exposed to COVID, and they have asked for prayers that nothing comes of that. We also pray for Gary and Carlita Gossel's nephew, who was hospitalized on Wednesday, dealing with some unknown issues related to his liver and kidneys. We pray for Bud Rosson's son, who had brain surgery uh, recently, within the last couple days. He is doing well, and we give thanks for that. For our country and world, uh, on this anniversary of 9-11, uh, we continue to pray for all the many challenges that we have in our country and around the world that continue to challenge us in our faith and our following of our Lord. Lastly, we want to remember uh, our Lutheran Outdoor Ministry Camp up in Idaho, Idaho. Camp Perkins, a major fire this week, was very, very close to that, so we pray for all those involved. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have spoken to us very clearly and very directly in your word. We thank you for that word, a word by which we can know you, a word by which you point us over and over again back to your son and the hope and the love and the life that we know in him. And Lord, it's because of that that we come to you and lay before you these requests that we've mentioned as well as many others that have gone unspoken today, but people and life and circumstances that we've carried in to this time of worship who are very much on our hearts and minds. Lord, we place them before you. We pray that being the God you are, you would provide what you know is needed most. For the joys and celebrations and thanksgivings, Lord, these are all coming back to you. They flow from your heart, your hand, and we praise and thank you for those gifts. So, Lord, one and all, we lay these matters, these people, these challenges and joys before you, praying that your will would be done and your grace would abound. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for this ministry of yours here at Emmanuel. We pray giving you thanks for the opportunity to step into this red-letter challenge, this journey, this time of building and growing over the next six weeks. And Lord, we pray your blessing on our time in your word, hearing it, studying it, taking it to heart and putting it into practice. Lord, let it be a blessing, not only for us, but for so many with whom we encounter we pray for today's ministry fair and the startup of many ministries here this fall. And we pray for that constant reminder that this is not ours, and it's not about us, but this is your ministry, and it is intended to point people back to you. So help us in all that we are and all that we do. Have Jesus front and center. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our country and for our world uh, on this anniversary of 9-11. We pray for the many people who continue to hurt because of it. But the loss of loved ones, the loss of material goods, the loss of innocence in so many ways. Lord, we pray that you would help us to be vigilant as a country, that we stand not on our own strength, but that we continue to be drawn back to you, your words, your truth, your ways. And Lord, we pray for those who lead us, for President Biden, for other world leaders who carry a tremendous burden on their shoulders. We pray for all those in our own country at every level of government who've been elected and appointed. For all these individuals, Lord, help them to govern wisely and well, not on the basis of their own desires, their own aims, 
their own goals, their own whims, but help them to govern on the basis and foundation of you, your truth, your word. And Lord, we pray for those up in Camp Perkins. We pray for others who have been impacted by this major fire up in the Northwest. We pray for your protection and we pray for your comfort for those who have lost homes or buildings or material goods. Use us as your people to reach out with joy, with help, with encouragement. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for all those who serve on our many front lines. We pray for those who serve in healthcare professions of all sorts. We pray for those in law enforcement, first responders and firefighters. We pray for those who are serving in our military here and around the world. Lord, we thank you for all of these men and women willing to put themselves in harm's way for us, for our health, our safety, our well-being, and for the freedoms that we enjoy. Watch over them, keep them safe, bring them a sense of joy and purpose as they carry out their vocations and callings and responsibilities. And we pray, Lord, that they do it for you. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we celebrate the Lord's Supper as we do most every week here at Emmanuel. Again, not out of ritual or habit or empty tradition, but it is because here that we come into contact with the living word touch, taste, smell, and the encounter as our Lord invites us to come to him, for him to provide for us what he knows we truly do need. So our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, if there are any of you here today wondering whether or not you should come and receive the Lord's Supper, would you ask yourself these four questions? First, do you know Jesus? Do you believe in him, trust in him as Lord and Savior? Second, do you acknowledge the sin and brokenness in your own heart and in your own life and desire the healing and the forgiveness that the Lord offers here? Third, do you believe our Lord's words, mysterious words, profound words that go beyond our ability to completely understand or ever explain? But do you believe the truth of Jesus' own words to us, that what we receive today is bread and wine, and it's also his very body and blood. And finally, fourth, would it be your intention with the Holy Spirit to work in your heart that you would look for the opportunity to put his words into practice, to share his love and his life with the people around you. The answer is yes to these questions. This gift is for you. We'll have our two serving stations on either end of the communion rail. Simply follow the direction of the ushers as they point you where you need to go. Children and young people not yet instructed in the Lord's Supper, you're invited to come for a blessing. Or if there are adults who would prefer simply to receive a blessing today, please come with your hands folded to indicate that. Otherwise, have your hands cupped to receive the bread. My friends, the table is ready, and the peace of the Lord be with you always.
invite all who are able to please stand. The body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen you in faith and fervent love toward one another, now and for all of eternity. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. And if you'd be seated for just a moment longer, thank you once again for joining together, both here in person and online. I do pray that we take up that challenge, whether that is formally in the many small groups that we have, or even in your own life, on a very personal, individual level, that we seek to aspire to those amazing things of building our house on the rock of Jesus. Now, we have the ministry fair that's going on. I encourage you to uh, peruse and check out all the various ministries that are going on. Many of what, much of what goes on here at Emmanuel is on display for this morning. There are goodies over in the West Atrium, so if you want to start there, that may be a good place to hang a right, grab a bite to eat, and then uh, take some time with sisters and brothers in the faith and. See what's there. Look for those opportunities maybe that you're not involved right now, but peak an in interest. So that's there for our youth and children. We've got some fun events going on in the gym that Miss Martha is uh, taking care of. So one and all, uh, some time to spend together. Uh, as we mentioned in the prayers, many other groups are starting up here now that fall is in full gear and uh, encourage you to let God use you. He's wired you. He's made you to be unique. Use those gifts. The best way to stay on top of what's going on, as many of you know, are through my email updates. I go out a couple times a week. If you're not on that email group but would like to be, stop at our information station just to the left outside in the atrium. Grab a welcome card. Give us your email address and name. We'll get you added into that, and you'll be able to uh, join in hearing about all the great things that have happened and all the opportunities that are still in front of us. So next week, we continue now with the Red Letter Challenge, and we'll be focusing in on being God's gift of who he has made us, that we get to be God's people for this time and place. Until then, go in peace. Serve the Lord.